night, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn the word and truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to those watching in, but the, no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's open up to John chapter 7, verse 14. The brother said it in the prayer. He said, no matter what, even you turn from your sin, you still got to pay. Ain't that the fucking darn truth? Ain't no, he said, God will not be mocked. What you sow, you will reap. He ain't getting away. Book tell us, Yahushua told us in this parable, he said, look, you can either fall on the rock and be broken, or the rock can fall on you and you be crushed. Ground the powder. Right? When we look at it, that's how it goes. That's the play. There's no way to escape. You either gonna fall into Yahushua's hands or you, you just gonna fall. Alright? So that's what we wanna do. We wanna look and see what Yahushua got to say. This is uh this is John chapter seven, verse fourteen. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters having never learned? Alright, so they marveled, they were surprised. They were like, how this man know the scripture? He ain't never he never been to one seminary class. How he know the scripture? I don't get it. Right? They were surprised at it. He just coming out there just speaking. And remember, we know in another place, they say he taught, he taught it as if he had authority. Right? So when he was teaching, they were looking at it like, oh, you know the scripture? Like, they can break them things down like that. I don't get it. All right? Let's hear about it. He said, have you never learned? And Yahushua answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but it's his that sent me. Let's see. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You got Christians writing books and books after everything, just trying to unlock that simple truth right there. Understand what he just said to us. If anyone does his will, talking about his father, if anyone does the will of the father, he will know whether this doctrine is what? True. Uh, whether the doctrine be of God or whether I speak of myself. You're going to know if you got correct doctrine if you do it. If you obey what the Most High God did give you, it's a whole lot of stuff in this book. Sometimes it's a little, we talking about, we in Revelations right now. A lot of this stuff real complicated. A lot of this stuff you read it, it's like, man, I don't know nothing about the dragon seven hair. I ain't got nothing to do. I don't know nothing about that stuff. You got stuff look like darn locusts with horse hair. What? Right? You look at it, it's, a, you, it's hard to understand that. Right? Most High God give you that in the form of a commandment. You might not know what to do. Right? But when the man tell you, do not steal. That thing ain't hard. Right? Obey that. If that's the only commandment that you ever got, obey that. I bet you'll open another one up to you. And after you do that one, I bet you'll open another one to you. That's the God we serve. Right? The reason why these people make a mess of this book and create a new denomination for every time they get a new opinion is because they do not obey the word. Most high God, and a lot of these people, there's a revelation behind it. That's why, you know, you got these people starting up all these churches. There's a real revelation that they get, right? It's some real piece of truth. There's a little nugget of truth that they get. You know what happened? They grab it and just get moving. They don't grab it, sit down, and learn. We talk about it all the time. You got two people, Martha and Mary, right? Martha cleaning up. She making sure everybody, everything prepared, right? Y'all sure walk in the door. She trying to get everything ready, make sure everybody good, everybody fed and all that. Mary said, I'm taking a break. Sat at the man's feet as soon as he sat down. And she learned from him. Martha was like, I can't believe Mary just sitting there sitting down. I'm sitting there trying to get everything ready. Yahushua responded to her. He said, she's doing what's needful. She's at my feet learning. She's doing what's needful. What is Martha doing? She's doing work, real work. Right? That's what you see a lot of Christians do. They're doing a lot of real work out there feeding the homeless. Right? They're doing it. Clothing drives, food drives, all these different things. And it's good work. It ain't bad work. It's real good work. Guess what they're not doing, though? They ain't learning no book. Right? So they're not learning what they need to obey. And so what the Most High God does, he take that revelation that you didn't, you didn't, you weren't faithful to. 
right? Because you, if you, God reveals something, you got to be faithful to it. So you took, he took that revelation you wasn't faithful to and then added foolery onto it. So now you got your seven-day Adventist denomination. Because, I mean, you knew that we were supposed to keep the Sabbath. These Christians don't know it. I know it, though. We're supposed to keep the Sabbath. You know what? Now we seven-day Adventists. You, what are you doing? Right? And that's where you got, you got one piece of truth. You just add a whole bunch of foolery onto it. Now you're the same Christian. You're just going to church a little bit earlier than other Christians. Right? Just 24 hours a little early. You just got there early. Right? And that's what we have to look at. We have to put ourselves in a position where it's not about glory. It's not about looking good. It's not about people being able to say, you know what? Those are real Christians. Right? Those are really caring people. It ain't about trying to convince, you know, if you want the world to accept you, you have to live as Jesus did. Okay, so that means you got to get rejected by all these folks. Right? You talking about Jesus, that means you got to get, I mean, I, I, am I reading the wrong book? That means you got to get rejected by these folks. That means people got to look at you and be like, that man's crazy. I don't know what his deal is. Right? I don't know where these people get it from, walking out like Jesus was just loved by everybody. He had a good 5,000 people that had to get fed by him and keep moving. That's about it. You bring a, a bunch of uh, bread and, and, and fish over to, you know what I'm saying, the Mario's market and just put it outside, they going to come to you too. They going like, praise God. You know what I'm saying? Get that fish. That catfish. No, we don't do catfish. Oh, well, I'll take it still. You know what I'm saying? They going to do it. They going to praise God too because we have to, be, we have to put ourselves in a position where it's about obedience for us. If it's not about obedience, we're going to lose every single time. And the little knowledge, or a lot of knowledge that we have, we Hebrews, right? We uh, we know how to how to dissect the New Testament and the Old Testament and put them together and make sure it all works. All this information that we have, we understand the 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 uh, the uh, chronology of revelations, right? All these different things that we look at, we understand what's gonna happen in the end time. We know Christian think it's going to be a rapture. We know it's not going to be a rapture. All this knowledge that we that we have and God has been so glorious to give us, he'll make you a fool out of after all that stuff if you don't continue to obey his word. That's what the crux of it is. It's one thing you you read Matthew chapter 7. You, it's one thing that he said. He said these people did many good works in his name. Right? He looked at them here. They asked the question. They said, have we not? And they list, they list many good works that they did in his name. Wondrous works, the book says. And it's one thing that he said disqualified them. He called them workers of iniquity. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's it. We make it all complicated. Well, see, they just didn't believe from the heart. Okay, how you know they didn't believe from the heart? How you know you do believe from the heart? When the book tells you the heart is deceitful. I'm supposed to take your word for it? All right. I'm going to take the book for it. That's what I'm going to do. Make sure your life line up with the book. What you laughing at? All right, you make sure your life line up with, your, your life line up with the book. That's safe for us. What the man going to tell you when you meet him? If you do everything the man say, what he going to tell you? He don't like you? That's a just God. How God going to look at you and be like, yeah, you did everything, but I don't like you, though. So I'm still sending you to hell. That's safe for us. I tell people all the time, you got to argue. Let's say, let's say, I mean, I don't like, I don't like how, the way God treats women in the Bible. Why a woman can't preach? I don't think it's fair. You might have a valid point. You know what I'm saying? You might have a valid point. Just obey God and make that argument later. Ain't that what Job was saying? Job was like, look, Job was like, listen, I'm, I'm righteous. I'm going to keep doing my thing. I just want my day in court with the man. That's all. Oh, Job was just like, man, I just want to explain myself. That's all. Ain't nothing unlawful about that. You just obey the man while you get there. Just do everything he say before you get there. That's what my mama always told me. I, I ran out in the street one time. And she told me to come out of the street. And I asked her why. You know what I'm saying? I was like, why? So after she got done beating my butt, she looked at me and she said, it's important for you to understand. If you in the middle of the street and there's a bus coming, you might not see that bus. When I tell you to get out of the street, I need you to react immediately because I see things that you don't see. That stuck me for my whole life. I get that. I understand that. That thing make perfect sense to me. So what you think is different with God? Just do what he say. He's going to be right in the end. He's going to find out that you don't have no argument and you don't want to make that argument when you get up there. He's like, I get you. I get you. Right? You right. You wasn't mistreating women at all. You was protecting our women. Right? These people mistreat these women. And they try to get us and get us in their culture and try to fit us in their stuff. 
fighting for they, they foolishness. It's these people that's wrong, not our God. Right? If you obey him, no, then you will know that's his doctrine. If you don't obey him, you'll be like, man, these people just running their darn mouth. These Christians, these Hebrew, everybody just running their darn mouth. You know what? I don't believe. I'm spiritual. Right? Which is cold for I just do what I feel like doing and I throw God on it. Where are we at? This is John chapter 14, uh, John chapter 7, verse uh, what, 16, 17? Uh, 17. 17, read 16 again for me. <laughs> And y'all sure answered his hand, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Uh -huh. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory. Uh -huh. but, he that seeks, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Right, ain't no unrighteousness in the one that seeks God's glory. That has to be our goal. All right, where we leave off last week? Revelation 11. So in Revelation 11, we were talking about the two witnesses, right? So we looked at it. First, we started talking about the plagues, right? And we talked about how all these plagues landed on the earth. And we were looking at those plagues. It's like, man, this thing feel a little familiar, right? Because we know when we read Revelation, a lot of people go wrong with Revelation because they threw out the front of the book, right? You throw out the law. You throw out the prophets. Revelation ain't going to make no sense to you. Or it's going to make a whole lot of wrong sense to you. There's a lot of people that read Revelation. I know exactly what that means when it's talking about the buzzing sound it's talking about helicopters and that's going to be world war three oh and that's talking about a nuclear bomb right and so they come up with all these theories and it makes sense we did that right we did that when way back in the day we came out to a party drunk high whatever we were we started reading revelation we did i mean we put the whole book of revelation together just as christian as we were we looked at it we said it finally makes sense the church of philadelphia is on the east coast right and we just sitting there like not knowing a lick of what we're talking about. But it made sense. God let it make sense to us because we was in foolishness. And we'd be confident in it. I'd go and argue somebody down. I know exactly what Revelation. You're wrong about Revelation. He'd do that to it because we wasn't obeying it. Right? So we look at these things. We look at Revelation. We try to open it up. Now when you know the scripture, now that we've read through the book and we understand the scripture, well, Revelation is nothing but like the greatest hits now. Right? Because Revelation just makes reference to all the Old Testament themes. Right. A lot of the Old Testament prophets, it just references up and it gives you more context. It's exactly what it calls itself. It's a revelation. All these these secret things, these things that nobody understood coming from the prophets it'll throw it in there and give you a little bit more context and allow you to kind of put things together. Right. So we looked at that. And we looked at these plagues. And we was like, well, what we say is when you read revelations, you should be able to say, I remember that, even though you've written something new. I remember that because it, it's always going to call you back to something else. We looked at the plagues and what do we remember? Uh, we remember Moses. Right? We was like, you know, some of these plagues sound just like Moses. Right? Then we start looking at the two witnesses. We was like, these two witnesses, that's interesting. They talking about a candlestick and they got the two olive trees. You know, that sounds a lot like what Zachariah was talking about. Right? So we look at these different things and we, we tied them back and we looked at all the similarities of these two witnesses that they have to Moses and Elijah. And we thought about who were the two people that showed up when Yahushua showed the vision to Peter, John, and uh, James. It was Moses and Elijah. So we theorized and we said Moses and Elijah will likely be the two witnesses in the end. All right? Based off of the, 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 the plagues that they are allowed to pull out, Based off of two things happening specifically, who remembers them? Elijah, the no rain. Elijah, the, the two witnesses, they say they will be able to stop up rain. How long can they stop it up? Three and a half years. How long did Elijah stop up the rain? Three and a half years. Y'all sure told us Elijah stopped the rain back in Israel when he was dealing with Ahab for three and a half years. That's the exact same time frame that Revelation talking about. So we know that's that link directly to Elijah. Then what was the other one? Uh, fire coming down. Fire coming down. But what was the other one? He's going to turn water into uh, water blood, in right? Yeah. Right? So we was like, man, I can't think of too many. Moses turned water into blood. So these are the two things that the book specifically called out about these two prophets. And Elijah had fire come down. When he, when, when he, when he uh, went up. Mount Carmel. Right? So we had these two things that specifically link back to these prophets. Right? And the book tells us there's going to be two prophets that come as witnesses. So that's what we looked at. We had to take a break from the plague. So we're going to try to get back into it. Let's, uh, let's start back... Uh, 
let's go ahead and start back with Revelation uh, 11. We're going to start at 3. We'll recap it. We ain't going to dig too deep into it. You know what I'm saying? We can watch the last Bible study uh, to get deeper into it. We'll just recap a little bit and we'll move on. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. What was the book talking about? And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days. How many, how, many, how many years is that? Three and a half. All right. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God and uh, before the God of the earth. Where did we hear about that first? Zechariah. All right, keep going. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Got to be dodged. You got to be killed by fire from their mouth. Right? Keep going. These have power to shut he shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And, a, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Moses. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. They can smite the earth with what? All plagues. As often as they will. As often as they will. Anytime they want to, they're making that thing come down. Anytime they want to, they're making that thing come down. So when we read about the seven plagues in Revelation, who you think bringing them? Right? Who you think bringing the plagues? It's going to be the two witnesses. Right? Keep going. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them mm -hmm. and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. And what else was interesting that we read about Moses and Elijah in relation to their dead bodies? Elijah didn't die. God called him up. Mm -hmm. And the most high buried Moses. Nobody could find his sepulcher. Nobody in in the world has ever seen a dead body for Elijah or Moses. Books say Moses died now, but never has anybody seen his body. All right? These are two people where their dead body cannot be found, cannot be accounted for. And it just so happens you have two dead bodies laying in the street for witnesses. And watch what happens to these two dead bodies. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half uh -huh. and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Uh huh. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because yep. these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Uh huh. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Uh huh. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud and their enemies beheld them. Mm -hmm. And the same hour was there a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake they was said it was a great what earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell huh mm -hmm. it's gonna be all types of earthquakes through these times come on in and have a seat it's gonna be all types of earthquake through these times right and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand how many of them seven thousand what they're talking about and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the god of heaven that's the only thing you're gonna do they got scared and gave glory to the God of heaven, right? A lot of these people imagine in their mind. There's a lot of Christians that imagine in their mind when, when they read in Revelations that all this stuff is going to be happening and people are going to rebel more towards God consciously. That people are just going to be like, you know what? God, I can't believe you making this happen, so now I hate you more. That's not going to happen. The reason why the book talks about how uh, these plagues happened and they still didn't turn from their idols it's because these idols that the book Bible is talking about, they don't know their idols, right? If you think, if you're a Christian and you think it's okay to have a cross on your neck and you think it's okay for you to have a dove on your Bible or on your car, you think it's okay to have the praying hand symbol on your watch or whatever, they don't know what they got. But all these different things, all these different symbols that they use to represent God and their religion and all these things, if you think that's okay, when all these things happen, what you going to do? You're going to pick up your cross and kiss it, right? You're going to kneel down to your praying hands, right? You're going to grab your Bible that got the dove on it. All these different things you're going to do. Your little car with the fish, you're going to put two fishes back there. Because, I mean, this is the time where you really need to be representing God. So now you're going to put two fish on there. You're going to put a cross on the back of your car, right? And that's why, that's why the Bible said they still ain't turned from the idol, only because they haven't accepted the fact that these are idols. They oh, this is not an idol. Not just a, I don't care nothing about this cross. I worship Jesus. I don't bow down to the cross. I worship Jesus Christ because he died on the cross for my sins. Okay, Christian. That's right. So then an atheist just come by, snatch that cross off your neck and throw it on the ground. What you going to say? I can't believe 
God is going to send you out. You're a hateful and you hate God. I just stomped on your cross. I love God. What are you talking about? I bet you they can't separate it. I bet you you take a cross, stomp on it. I bet you they can't separate, separate the fact that you love God, I mean, love God and still stepped on their cross. They're going to count it as the same. Because they know that's what they look at as they God. That's the God. That's the representation of their God. What you think an idol is? People ain't dumb. They wasn't dumb back then. When they had idol, idols of uh, Baal, they wasn't sitting there looking at it like this is Baal. They knew that this is a representation of Baal. Well, nobody's stupid. It's still an idol. I don't care nothing about what it represents. It represents an idol. Obey the word. No graven images. What's the point? Why are we going to mess around, even if it's a question? What do you get from the uh, cross? So why are you going to mess around with it? If it might be wrong, what do you get from it? Does it do anything for you? By having it, do you, are, are you more righteous? Put that thing down there. Put all that stuff away. Help yourself out. The most I got giving you everything you need. Just help yourself out. That's what it's about for us. Just to be, just come and submit to the man. A lot of us just trying to hold on to stuff we want to hold on to for what? You're going to lose it. You're not going to beat them. You're not going to trick them. You, nothing's getting by the man. You just got to do it. Right? It's book. What we got? He said earthquakes happen. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the people start giving glory to, to the most high God after the earthquakes happen. This book, it tells us about earthquakes, all three, even y'all sure he told us about uh, earthquakes. Isaiah told us about, uh, go to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah told us about earthquakes. Earthquakes is a big component in what we're talking about. Right? We're talking about coming to the day of the Lord. So you got to read closely because when the book talks about the day of the Lord, it talks about sometime before that notable day of the Lord. And sometimes it says on the day of the Lord. Right? So you got to look at the differences. Earthquakes is one of the things that happened before and on the day of the Lord. It's Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19. Watch what the book says. And there shall go into the holes, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the, into the caves of the earth, I wonder what for the fear there. of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he arise to shake terribly the earth. Mm -hmm. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. <laughs> He'll get rid of them days at that point. They're going to learn. They're going to have them. They're going to get rid of them. Damn, if the books say, what do you think it's talking about? Keep going. To go into the cliffs of the rocks and to the tops of the ragged rocks mm -hmm. for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. He's going to shake terribly the earth. Right? He lets them know these people are going to be scared. They're going to run. They're going to eventually start giving up their idols. Right? The ones that keep their idols, you think they're keeping them just to be rebellious to God? That's crazy. You ain't going to have no Buddhists. Oh, I'm still going to worship Buddha. I know all this stuff is prophesied in the Bible, and it's happening just like the Bible said, but I'm still going to worship. They ain't crazy. They don't throw Buddha away. Only ones that are going to keep their stuff are these Christians. Right? These Muslims that bow down to that thing in Mecca. That's the only ones that are going to keep it because they're going to think they're still right. They're going to be looking at it like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah I told y'all God was doing it. They're going to they gonna think God on their side. Why they, why they lighting their butt up? He's going to be lighting their butt up. They're still going to be sitting there, well, you know, good and evil happens. God, what do you say? The rain, the rain falls on the, on the just and the unjust. That's how they're going to look at it. Yeah, okay. Now, it ain't had nothing to do with us. When we talked about it, what happened? We're going to talk about us. Grab, uh, grab Revelation chapter 6. Let's, let's talk real quick. If Revelation chapter 6, give me verse 15. Let's talk about these earthquakes. We're going to get to us. He was in Egypt. He definitely made a distinction. What did he say? He said, I'll make it. Forget Revelation 6. You write about that. Grab Exodus. What I want? Exodus chapter 8. He made a distinction between them. These people don't know what they're talking about. You know, rain gonna fall on the unjust and unjust when it come to when it comes to his wrath. That thing only gonna hit the unjust. We started off when we talked about, we talked about how we was gonna be hidden in that day. Those that obey God. Oh, you're going to be hidden in that day. We suffering now. Right? What he's doing is he's putting this on the people who didn't suffer. We suffering now. We've been suffering. That's why you got to suffer. Life too easy. You just sinning and you enjoying life. Yeah, okay. Books say, you know, to love, there's one thing you can't do. You can't rejoice in sin. Books say you cannot rejoice in it. 
if you rejoice in iniquity, there's no way you can love. So if you can't love, the Christian to, Christian to light your butt up, you come in and talking this commandment stuff. They are light your butt up. There's only two commandments that fulfill the whole law. Love God and love your neighbor. Right? And that thing, fact too, it ain't nothing. What you gonna say back to that? I mean, yeah, but you gotta also keep the commandment. Love God! <laughs> love your neighbor. That thing, fact, what you gonna say to it? That thing, book, they can go right to it. You can't argue against it. Well, yeah, but you don't understand love. Right? That's the only way we can get. You don't understand love. But what book you going to take them to to not understand love? You got to take them to Paul. And Paul going to tell you, you cannot rejoice in iniquity. You rejoice in iniquity, you're not loving God, you're not loving your neighbor. Oh, you sin. It's impossible to stop sinning. Yeah, but see, that's the reason why Jesus died for us. Because it's impossible for us to stop sinning. Oh, is that right? Okay. So you rejoice in it. You happy about that, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm very joyful that the Lord died for my sins. Okay, that's good. That's good. But you can't stop sinning, huh? So you in iniquity. Well, yes, yes, yes. Because everybody is in iniquity because it's impossible to stop sinning. So now you judge me. <laughs> so <laughs> you know now you judge me. So you calling me a sinner. You don't even know me. <laughs> everybody. You, you light them up, right? Because it's the, the book, the way the book is set up, it's a trap, right? A lot of people don't believe this, but the book, the, the way the Bible is set up is a trap. It, it traps people. It it's puts things in different places where you won't understand it, right? So if you're not a person who, who studies or a person who's taught and, are, and, and attentive to the person who's teaching, and it's the person who's teaching has to be sent from God, if you don't have that particular setup, right, you're not going to understand the book, which means it's going to be a trap for you. So then when a Christian looks at, God so loved the world, they looking at God loved the world so much that he gave his son, right? When a Hebrew who understand the book and had the, had the book taught to him properly, when he looking at it, he's saying God so loved the world, as in God loved the world just like he described in those two verses before where he talked about Moses holding up the brass serpent, right? And when all the snakes start biting all our people in Israel in the wilderness, then they looked up at this brass serpent and they were healed. So now it means something for us. We looking at it, we connect to history. God loved the world like he loved the children of Israel in the wilderness. Right? That makes sense to us. He's taking what he offered to Israel and he's spreading that to the world. Right? It has context for us. For a Christian who is not familiar with the Old Testament, they threw that away because it's done away with. You don't need that anymore. Right? For them, now they have to create a new narrative. God loved the world so much. Right? So now God is desperate. In their mind, God is desperate for us. So in, in their context, it makes sense that you could say, you know what? I know you can't stop sinning. God still loves you. Because now God's desperate. He'll take anything at this point in their mind. Because God so loved the world. And that's how the narrative changes because there's no structure around what they believe. It sets you up in a trap. I look at this verse. I don't consider the rest of them. I can go wherever I want and then I land in the snare. Right? But if I look at this verse, and I can't go too far because it's tethered to this verse, and I can't go this way because it's also tethered to this verse, it keeps me within the, 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 the scope that God has. And that's why he says, abide in me, right? Because we have a certain circumference that we can walk in, right? We go too far, we outside of him. He can't protect us, right? We walk inside, we good. That's where all the understanding comes from. As long as we are inside, when these things start to play out, we're protected. And it's not going to be a rapture. It ain't no Jesus coming about three, four. You know what I'm saying? They try to tell you that Jesus comes to the earth three, four times. You know what I'm saying? Well, he came his first coming. And then his second coming, part one, he shows up in secret, only the Christians to see him, and he takes you up. Then he disappears. Then second coming, the real thing, that's when the world is destroyed. Like, I ain't never read no three comings now. Homie just came one time when I read it. Right? Then he coming one other time after that, and y'all done. Right, but it's important for us to be able to look at it and just debunk some of this stuff. It's like, whoa, whoa, wait, show me in the book. Anything I tell y'all, I'm gonna show y'all right in the book. That's it. Any man of God in this environment, they're gonna show you in the book. In time past, maybe you didn't have to do that because it wasn't so much to see. But when y'all sure went up, who came down? See, that's it. A lot of people, a lot of people tell you when Satan, when Satan came to the ground, beginning of the world, he was. Six of them. And, and after he 
was the man over the choir, he thought, I want to be God. And then God cast him down. That doesn't sound like a Greek novel, right? But that's not our book. You'll never see Lucifer and Satan anywhere near each other, right? What you're going to see is Lucifer talking about the king of Babylon who was exalted by God and then taken down by God. Was he not made to like an animal and a beast? Right? Did Isaiah 14 not start off with, say this parable to the king of Babylon? Did it not finish up by saying, I will do this to Babylon? Same chapter, before and after all this Lucifer madness. But somehow we get the devil out of it. Right? That's because our belief, all we looked at is Isaiah 14, 12. It's not tethered to anything. So I can take this and make it whatever I want. Nothing can hold me back. When you have to tether it, oh, I got to tether this to verse 4. And I think verse 22, verse 21, something like that. And a verse 21. When you have to tether it, I can't go too far with that. I have to stay in this area. That's how you understand the book. You have to make sure that everything in the book is tied to other verses. That's what the book is saying. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's what it's talking about. When it says rightly divide the word, why would you have to divide the word if you could just read it straight through? You have to take this piece and divide it and put it with this piece. Now it makes sense, right? There's no way to do that unless you either have a teacher that's sent from God. I can't just anybody just running their mouth. You gotta have a teacher that's sent from God or the most high God have to reveal it to you in your own study, right? It's important for us. And you're not going to do any of it. Either way, whatever you got, you ain't going to get any of it if you don't obey what you do know. Right? If we stay tethered to the book and to God, we'll be protected. All this stuff going down, we'll be protected. He can make a difference. That's what we're going. Ex Exodus chapter 8, verse uh, 22, maybe? Ch Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and your people. He going to do what now? Put a division between my people and your people. And what's going to happen after that? Tomorrow shall this sign be. And so the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into all his servants' houses, mm -hmm. and into all the land of Egypt, and the land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. Oh, goodness. That sucks for Egypt. What else? And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the, in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we w shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. Lo, we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? All right, grab uh, Exodus chapter 10. So he told, he said he'll put a division. He's going to put flies on there, but he's going to separate us, right? Watch uh, Exodus, what I say, 10 or 12? 10. 10, then give me 12 after that. This Exodus chapter 10. Give me verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. He said it's going to be darkness over the land of Egypt? Even darkness which may be felt. Ooh, it's thick darkness. You can feel it. All right? Keep going. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. All the land of Egypt, right? They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. Mm -hmm. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Light in their what? In their dwellings. When you in your house, you good. You think Egypt was good in their house? They couldn't see nothing through all the land of Egypt. Israelites, when they was in their house, they was good. They had to be inside, though, right? They have to abide in the house, just like we have to abide in Yahushua. When we get to moving, we get to going too far off, exploring, doing some extra extracurricular studying, doing all this stuff, because we so smart and so woke, all this extra stuff we do, and we get too far. We forget to be tethered to what the Most High God is talking about. We forget our, our obedience, right? And at that point, we're not protected. We think we are, but we're not protected at that point. Right? What do you think, even with Passover? Right? What do we have to do? We have to put the blood on the doorpost. Where we get our blood from? The lamb. We get, our, we get our blood from the lamb, we put it on the doorpost. And after that, what we do? Go play outside? <laughs> stay your butt in the house. You stay your butt in the house, and as long as you're in the house, any, 
Did he not tell? He said anybody who's in the house. What about Rahab? What she do for us? He hid us in the house. <laughs> she hid him in the house. What was the deal we made with her after that? You and your you and your family if he spared. How do we know that they're gonna be spared? What was the sign that we gave her? We gave her what do we give her? Almost. We gave her a red cord. Right. <laughs> scarlet cord, with the book say. We gave her a scarlet cord. She said, put it, he said, put it on the house. By putting that on that house, we know. Oh, I, almost, I wish I knew exactly where it was. We can get that's a powerful thing. He said, put it on the house. He said, by doing that, we know we won't touch this house. Everybody else dying. That's a book. Everybody else gotta die. You put this on your house. We won't harm anybody in that house. But the book, I wish I knew where it was off the top of my head because I would tell y'all to go there. But it tell us. It say anybody. He said, I will not be responsible for anybody who set foot outside that door. You step out, you might get killed. Everybody on the inside, they cover. That's a book. You think, you think these repeating things happen for no reason? You think that's about Rahab? You think God cares so much about Rahab he put that story in there? That's talking about Yahushua. All this stuff is testifying of the Messiah. That's what we look at. All the stories that we read in the Bible. It looked like, a, oh, yeah, Joseph has a beautiful story. That story ain't about Joseph. That story about Yahushua. All the book about Yahushua. You look into the scripture and you think in them you're going to find eternal life. But all of it testifies of him. That's it. The whole time it's trying to tell you this is how it works. Joshua 2. This is Joshua chapter 2. What verse? Mm. I appreciate you. What's the last verse? It's like, it's between like 13 and 22. But which one do you want specifically or do you want the whole story? No, I don't want the whole story. Give me, uh, I just want, uh, what's 13 say? We'll do 16. All right, this, this, is, uh, this is Joshua chapter 2, verse 16. And she said, get, and she said unto them, get you into the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, may ye go your way. Mm-hmm. Now nah, you got to get jump on down. Oh, no, you know, it's good. Just yeah. keep reading. My fault. Keep on. And the man said unto her, we will be blameless of this, thine oath, which you have made us swear. Mm -hmm. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread on the window, which you did let us down by. And you shall bring your father and your mother and your brethren and all your father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head. I <laughs> think you got, listen. If they leave that house, that has nothing to do with us. Don't put that blood on us. That's on them if they decide to leave this house. How do you think it was on Passover? The most I got to separate us. It ain't hard. Rahab was a Gentile. A Gentile are the same people that the most I God told us, kill them all. He didn't say just kill the, the, the men and lead the women. He said kill every one of them. But she showed her loyalty to our people and not to them false gods. So he said, you know what? I'm going to let these people go ahead and make a deal with her. He protected her. That's, a, that's, the, that's the same opportunity we all have. Each one of us. We all have the same opportunity. All it comes down to, obedience. You get to moving too fast, doing whatever you want to do. You don't want to listen. I mean, I know the red scarlet outside the window, but I just want to go get a loaf of bread. I mean, that's a good. I mean, my kid's hungry. They got to eat. I just got to step out and get a loaf of bread. I mean, that's a good reason. I mean, it's for my kid. God, you know how Christians are. God would not want, God is a God of family. They, you know, they always make him a God or something. God is a God of family. He would never want you to have your kids on. Go on out there and get you some bread. Next thing you know, your head just get chopped off by one of the Israelites like, coming around there and taking the place. It's important for us. We got to put ourselves in a position where it means something to us when God tells us to do something. It's not just safer. I mean, it means we got to be proud to do what the Most High God says. I don't care nothing about what these people do and what they say. For us, it's about this is what God told us. Y'all ain't got no God. None of these people got a God. Any, any person that got a viable God that the, that the world, part of the world might respect, they attaching it to our God. The Muslims, they got to attach it to our God. The Christians, they got to attach it to our God. Right? The, 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 uh, the Jewish people, they got to attach it to our God. Don't nobody respect the rest of these religions. 
They just got a lot of people in them because they're crazy. Nobody respect this stuff. Them the only three religions people got a little bit of respect for. And the only little bit of respect they respected for it because they're coming to the God of the Hebrews. Ain't that what he called himself? I don't want to call him nothing. He don't call himself that. I mean, if, if he didn't tell Moses to say that, then I don't want to say it. I remember him saying the God of the Hebrews. I think that ain't lawful to say. I think it's important to say. He the God of the Hebrews. Right? And the God of all flesh. And the Lord of the Sabbath. He ain't never been no Lord of Sunday. You ain't never read it. You've never read Lord of Sunday. You know Sabbath ain't no darn Sunday. You gotta stop talking to me about this crazy stuff. Meet my Christian sister. <laughs> I missed you too. This is uh, where we at? This is uh, Revelation chapter six. We still gonna get Exodus twelve. We'll go back to it. I didn't forget. It's Revelation chapter six, verse fifteen. Try to shoot through this. Thank you. You ain't gonna give me a water? You got your boot on? Oh, no, you ain't, no, you ain't, you ain't gotta sit down. You, ain't, yeah. no, you, hurt. Oh, you shouldn't a, be wearing it. It's a boot. What are you talking about? You're doing it for tax purposes. <laughs> it's Revelation chapter 6. Give me verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's just like what Isaiah was talking about, huh? They hid themselves in the dens and the rocks and the mountains. What else? And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. They said, just fall on us, please. And hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For, great, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? He said, the great day of his wrath is going to come. He said, after that, who is going to be able to stand after that? Yeah, Hosea tried to tell them too. Right? He's letting us know. They let, these kings and these people of the earth, they scared. Scared for their darn life. Right? Grab Exodus 11. What do you think going to happen? I mean, why do you, first of all, let's take it a step back. Why are these plagues happening in the first place? Remember, we Hebrews, we know our law. We don't have to, we don't have to guess. We don't have to look at this and be like, Mm, I think they're happening because God is angry at people. Okay. Yeah. Why, though? We, want you we, got, we got context. We can look back in history and we say the first go. time that this happened, it was to do what? Free his people. Specifically what people? The Hebrew. I mean, the first time some plagues hit, the whole purpose was to get uh, 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 the Pharaoh to free the Hebrews. Let my people go. He had to convince Pharaoh that uh, you ain't got it like that. And make Pharaoh admit that these people can go. That was the purpose of the first plague. What do you think the purpose of these plague going to be? Let me see. Hebrews in captivity. Lost their heritage. Gentiles in the land. Prophesied to go back to their land. Hmm. It's to let his people go. Right? It's to let his people go. So if you got these people so scared, they want rocks to fall. What they gonna what they gonna see when they when they learn that oh this is about the Hebrew, and they gonna let rocks fall on them? What you think they gonna be doing? Get y'all butt up out of here, just like they did in Egypt. Good, grab uh, what did I say? Exodus eleven. Mm. Let's grab that. Watch this. It's Exodus chapter eleven, verse one. Hey, Mackenzie. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Uh -oh. Afterwards, he will let you go. Hence. He said, I'm going to bring one more plague. And after that, he going to let you go. The whole, if we read the whole book of, Egypt, I mean, the whole book of uh, Exodus, or, or at least the, the parts that's referring to the plagues, the whole time he telling them, you're going to do this plague. But you know what? Pharaoh's still not going to let you go. He tell them that the whole time. He's like, you're going to do this plague. But it's hard going to be hard. He still ain't going to let you go. This time, he was like, I'm going to do one more. After that, he's going to let your butt go. <laughs> he's going to let your butt go after this. That thing hit now. Right? Jump on down. Jump on down. Give me a, uh, or no, actually, it's going to be in the next chapter. It's going to be in 12. Exodus chapter 12. Give me uh, verse 26.
He said, I'm going to get one more plague on him. And after I put this plague on him, he going to let you go out there. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean you by this service? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. That's Exodus chapter 12? Yeah. What verse is that? 26. Give me 29. In the past that at midnight the Lord smote there all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of This Pharaoh. was that last plague that he was referring to, right? So he smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. All the babies dying. Babies. Some of them grown too. A lot of people just, just assume that it was all babies and kids. No, no, no. Some of these kids grown. Grown, but it was they first, they, the firstborn. So that's the oldest kid, right? Some of these they grown folks just dying, just dropping dead. Right? And then his kid died, dropped dead. Right? That's a that's a grievous thing to go. Your oldest? I lose my son? That thing gonna hurt. That thing gonna hurt. Right? You look you something like that happened and you know it's in connection to these Hebrews wanting to go. I mean, I'm a king, right? I'm a king. And I've been saying, you know what? Nah, y'all gonna stay here, y'all good, right? All my people see this, right? Now, after all my people lose their firstborn child, what do you think they saying to me after that? This whole time you've been holding out, I lost my baby over your foolishness? Who cares about these dark Hebrews? Let they butt go. Pharaoh looking like, mm, 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 get your butt up out of here then. That's what he tell Watch this. Y'all think I'm lying. Watch it. Watch what he said. And it came to pass that, the, at, that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, uh -huh. and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all the servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Mm -hmm. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from amongst my people. Pharaoh said it right away. Both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. Get y'all butt out of here. We don't want y'all here no more. You see how quick that thing changed? Look how much could have been salvaged from obeying God in the first. Look how much Pharaoh would have saved by obeying God from the first. And you got a lot of people that have looked back on their life. All the mess they didn't create it. And you know what they say? No regrets. I don't regret it. You got to live with no regrets. You know what? If it wasn't for that old dis disobedience to God, I wouldn't be where, where I am right. No, no, no stuff, dummy. <laughs> of course you wouldn't be there. Don't you know you would be better? What did he tell David? You know, I gave giving you way more. He listed right? off all the stuff he blessed David with after the matter of Uriah. He listed off all that stuff. He's like, man, I gave you this, and I gave you that, and I gave you plenty of wives. And I would have gave you more. That got to mean something to us. You hear the most high God say, I would have gave you more, but you sin? We can't. Hearing something like that, if we believe that, you can't look back and be like, I can't regret it. Because without that, I wouldn't have learned all this stuff. No, your butt wouldn't have had to learn. Your you butt would have already knew to obey God. We have to take a different attitude when we look at this stuff. We have to regret. We have to look back and be like, you know, that's just a mess. Paul, he was there. Paul suffered the entire time. Who think who in the world think you getting away from your sin? You not. You get away. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of these people are fool you. Oh, God gonna forgive you and all that. He, he gonna forgive you after the resurrection, right? Like when you resurrected, that's when you get forgiveness. You still here? Your butt in the ringer. He lighting your butt up. Your righteous butt. You turn from all sin? Oh, that's a good, that's a good thing. I ain't going to remember none of your sins. You still going to get it while you're here, though. That's why Paul had to suffer. God didn't let it go. It wasn't like I was just like, oh, all right, for sure. Nah, he didn't let that thing go. You still have to suffer. Everybody has to suffer. You either going to suffer in the end, or you going to suffer during. That's it. But everybody going to suffer. You going to suffer in eternal hell, or you going to suffer right now. While obeying God. But there's no other way to get around it. Because we all sin. We all fell short. That's how it go. You fall short. Now your only thing is. Your only way out. Turn. Clean yourself up. Right? Use every tool that the man gave you. To make it into that kingdom. You make it into that kingdom. You say. Then you forgive. And then it's washed away.
And you still gonna have some some uh some uh consequences of your of your actions, right? Because he told us, he said, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And he said the what in the kingdom of heaven? What was what was after the greatest? The least. So that means it's still levels after that. So that means by me, let's just say I'm 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 like, you know what? I know everything. I know that Yahushua gave us commandments. And the law testifies in what is that? Uh Deuteronomy 18. The what? Law testifies, I think it's Deuteronomy 18, that the one who was raised up like Moses, his words will I require of you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we know that's Yahushua. Yahushua comes, he gives us specific commandments. So what are the commandments that's required of us? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart. With all your mind. Anything Yahushua told us, right? Because the book say his words will I require of you. So Yahushua tell us something there. that's that's I mean that's what's required of us. So I'm smart. I know that, right? So that means the law. I mean, if I miss a Sabbath, I ain't going to go to hell. Right? I know that now. I know. I'm like, man, I ain't going to go to hell. I miss a Sabbath. All right. So I just start missing Sabbath. I start eating my pork. I start just doing whatever I want to do. What that mean for me? Just be least. He said, book say it. What, what is, that? is that? What is that? Matthew 5? Matthew 5 will tell you. He said, grab it. Let's grab it real quick. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. We're going to come back and get back on track. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. People just got to be taught. That's all. That's the only thing. We just, we just, we're malnutritioned. Ain't that what the book prophesied in Ezekiel? He told the man, he's like, man, these people, he, you, you bring these people into my pastures and you stomp all over the waters and make them muddy and then make them drink out of it. We malnutrition. They take the good and then they give us whatever's left. They go to these seminary schools and they learn everything. They learn everything. They learn the book in and out. They learn the history behind it. What they teach the congregation. How to not feel bad if you sin. That's it. That's the crux of it. How to feel real good when the band starts playing. It's important for us to be able to be taught. That's all the people, just malnutrition. The Most High God is raising up men of God. To start teaching the people. And one day he's going to bring us all together. But at right now, he's just saying, feed my flock. Because he got to pull flocks from all different places. So we got to have this little Bible study, two or, two or three people in it, and about 20 maybe people watching online. That's fine. Small flock, that's all right. You got another small flock over here, maybe just three people. Then you got one, maybe 100 people. Righteous people, though. I ain't talking about these, you know what I'm saying, these others. I'm talking about righteous people that obey the word and stick to it and teach it correctly. And we don't know none of them. We be searching for them. We don't know none of them. One day, the most our God is going to bring us all together. Right? We just got to be faithful. No matter what it look like. No matter if it's just me and you in here. And we ain't been like that. One day, what we doing? We ain't going to miss it. Right? We going to... Listen. Let's just think about it. Acts chapter 2. Let's just say... Let's just say this, this, uh, this, uh, this feast of weeks, I didn't want to show up. What did I miss? The spirit fell down on the people. Do you want to miss that? I mean, if you wasn't there that day, I mean, that's just, I mean, I just took this year off, right? I didn't want to come. If you wasn't there that day, how many people got converted? Three thousand. You—that's a big thing that you missed. I mean, let's just say you—you you wasn't even in town, right? You wasn't even in town. You missed that whole process. You find yourself fighting against God because you, you miss witnessing the very miracle that it would have took for you to be like, oh, this is real. Now you got to hear about it secondhand. You mean, please, some spirit fella. People are speaking in what? Man, eh, listen to that stuff. Please. That's them same people that talk about Moses. Right? You're going to let somebody else create the narrative for it. It's important. We can't be missing this stuff. Most our guy, it's a reason why he said bring us together. Because he, he made it that way to agitate one another. When we could look at one another, even if even if it's even if with we looking at somebody doing bad, one of our brothers doing bad, that's encouraging us. Because you know what you're gonna tell your brother when you when you righteous? You gotta do brother. You gotta do better. You gotta do better. Let me help you out of that. When you helping your brother out of that, what you look like falling. Right? Because it's not about you at that point. Now you're looking like, man, I gotta make it just for my brother to make it. That's encouraging. When you're seeing your brother make it, guess how it make you feel? Man, we can really do this. I remember it was a day I couldn't, 
you can't turn away from sin. It's impossible to completely stop sinning. Then I see my brother. I'm like, man, this thing real before my eyes. It's real before my eyes. I see my wife. This is real before my eyes. What I'm going to do? Right? That's what it's about, keeping us together. Right? Then we can look and we can, we can, we can, we can, we can look at the law. We can look at our, our commandments and we can obey them with confidence. The same type of confidence that Job had. All right, then anybody come to Job talking about, yeah, sinner, Job ain't listening to that stuff. Like, man, what y'all talking about? Right? Because he had that confidence that got me. I knew I do. I know anything the man gave me, I know I took it and I ran with it. Anything he gave me. That's it. He ain't going to talk to Job off no ledge talking about he's sin. He's like, man, show it to me. What I sin in? Right? That's the type of confidence that God is looking for. A lot of us not confident. And the reason why we're not confident because we haven't cultivated what God has given us. Right? We're not using all his tools. We take the book, we take a little part of the book, you know what I'm saying? We focus in our, our areas that we want to focus on, you know what I'm saying? And then we're not, we not looking at everything and we're not continuing to learn. Peter tells us, add on to, to, to peace virtue and add on to virtue uh, kindness and brotherly love. You have to keep adding on to these things. And if you do that, he said, you will never what? Never fall. Y'all want to know how to stop sinning? Never be fruitful nor unbearing in the word of righteousness. Y'all want to know how to stop sinning? Add on to it. Just keep going. That's it. Just keep at. Don't stop. Don't get me like, oh, man, we've been doing it for three months. That's a good run. Nah. Keep going. This is the rest of your life. Keep at. Keep going. Keep at. Keep going. Keep loving. Keep bringing people along with you. Keep doing it. Whatever you have to do, don't give up on it. It's the word. Then it become clear to you. Then you start getting stuff like this. This is Matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 17. It's, it's what the whole world can't get. This, this one area of verse, make it clear. Whole world can't get this. You got Christians no, the law's done away with. You got Hebrew Israelites. No, you got to keep the law, right? If you don't keep the law, you're going to hell. You got Christians. No, no, no. If you keep the law, you, you, what do you say? Uh, you, fall from grace. you fall from grace. That's what they say. You fall from grace. You keep. So they on each side and they just arguing back and forth. Whole time, the Lord speaking, we did not listen. Right? This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what the book say. Watch how he shoot both of these theories down in one, what is it, two, three verses? Four verses? Not three. Three verses. Watch this. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I got the Christians. Keep going. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Uh -huh. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. When does heaven and earth pass? Day of the Lord. What, what, what chapter can we see it in? What day of the Lord? Mm -hmm. you see it in I'm talking about the, the, the heaven and earth passing. Oh, oh, Revelations 22, is that? Revelation 20. 20. Yeah. 19, I think. 19. Yeah. Or maybe 21. But Revelation 20 for sure. Right? Heaven and earth pass away. And then what do you see? The great white throne. All right, with the Christians, the great white throne judgment. Right? That's what they're talking about. Right? They don't know that it tells us right there, heaven and earth pass away. That's when you can talk about some law. Right? And then that thing's still going to be uphill. Still. You can talk about that too. Keep going. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Uh-oh. So if you break the commandments, you're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven? But you're still in there, right? That got the Hebrew Israelites. I mean, he tell you, no, nah, you can't make it into the kingdom unless you keep the law. Even though he just said you're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven, right? Book also tells us, we ain't got to get it. What position, uh, not Matthew, uh, John the Baptist. What did y'all sure say about him? He was the greatest among men. He was the greatest among men. How would you rank him against somebody in the kingdom of heaven? He would be the least in the kingdom of heaven. He Those said, that are greater than him. Yahushua said even the least in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven is, is greater than the greatest man born among men. That lets you know what the least is. Least ain't no, I mean, the least ain't no nobody to shake your head at now. Right? He better than John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, he said, ain't nobody holding the candle to John the Baptist now. Right? So we look at it. We know what the least is. Don't let these people try to tell you, no, nah, least means you ain't getting in. When you least, you doing this. You least, when you least, your butt is better than John the Baptist, so shut your mouth. Right? He said, if you break the key, I didn't put it in there. Let's make sure you read it again. If you break the commandments, what's going to happen? For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass away. 
To heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Who, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in let's the kingdom of heaven. That's all I'm talking. The whole point of this: let's be great. It's still levels to it. Everything. There's no way to get away from consequences, right? He forgive your sin. The penalty of sin is death. He'll forget that. He ain't going to kill you. Right? You obey what he say, he'll bring your butt back. You still going to die, actually. But he'll bring your butt back. You'll be all right. He'll give you your life. Right? Because he's a gracious God. He, he gave that to us. Right? As long as we obey him, he'll do it. Let me tell you something. You ain't escaping. You don't want to keep the commandments? That's cool. That's cool. You'll be the least. You'll be the least. You'll be in the kingdom. You'll be the least. You better than John the Baptist. You ain't messing with the greats up here. You ain't going to be the ones at my table. Y'all do know he's going to have a table, and it's going to be a whole lot of people sitting at that table. He said, you ain't going to make it to the table now. Then you're going to be down there. I mean, you can eat maybe in the same court. You might have to eat outside, but you're not making it to the table, right? And, then, I mean, that's real good for the people that's not even in, right? It's going to be people. We're going to talk about all this stuff. It's going to be people alive, just like me and you today, still walking around when we resurrected. A lot of people think, day of the Lord, everybody dies. You read through Revelations, you don't see nothing about everybody dying. You see a third of the earth is killed. You see 7,000 people die. You'll never see where everybody died. It's going to be people walking around just like we are now, human beings, regular people, while we're walking around looking like gods. We're going to be walking around just like God. He said we're going to have his likeness. Whatever he is, that's what we're going to be. We're going to be like gods. Didn't Psalm tell us? Did your psalm not say that you are gods? What do you think it was talking about right now? You let, the, you let a lot of people take that and be like, see, we gods right now? Shut your mouth. I ain't no god right now. You'll be god when you take on the air. When you, when, you, when you actually account yourself to being something that he calls you to be. And he kill you and resurrect you. That's when you a god. You can say you a god like him only because you with him. And these people going to have to look at us. And they're going to have to see. And the same people that, 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 that made us impossible. Same people that, that tried to kill us. These same people have to suffer and they got to obey our law still. Most of God going to send plagues on their land if they don't. This is all book. We're going to discuss it. We're going to get in, in depth to this next week and maybe the week after. Right? This stuff is important. Grab uh, grab uh, what we leave off on before Matthew. Revelation 6. We was on Revelation 6. Mm -hmm. Give me Revelation 18 then. Revelation 6 was talking about getting these people up out the land. And then after that, no, I think we, didn't after that, we, we go somewhere else? No? Revelation 6, I think, is when they, was, they wanted the mountains to cover them up. Yeah, then we started talking about getting these people out the land. We talked about uh, Exodus uh, 11, I think. Then we went on down to Exodus 12. And then uh, uh, we was talking about how the people were trying to get us out of the land. Right? Then before that, we talked about how the Most High God put a difference between us. Right? Just like he did in, in Egypt. He put a difference. He said, man, it's going to be darkness for them. But in y'all house, y'all good. Right? He said, I'm going to send flies on all these people. But in the land of Israel, ain't going to be no fly. I'm going to make a division. In Goshen. Right? In the land of Goshen. Sorry about that. Right? This is uh, Exodus chapter 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm -hmm. and, his, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Is Watch fallen. This. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. You know, yeah, like I told y'all, whenever y'all reading Revelations, it's referring back. It's referring back to the scripture. I think that's referring back to Isaiah. We ain't got to get it, but I want to say it's 21. I might be wrong about that. But uh, that's referring back to Isaiah 21. So when it's talking about Babylon the Great, it's a debate about who mystery Babylon is and what it represents and all that. And I don't have that answer. Right, I only show y'all what I can what I can prove with the book. If I can't prove with the book, when we talked about when we talked about the the dragon that has seven heads, I mean the beast that have seven heads, and they talk about five of them was, one is, and one is yet to come. I can prove that with the book. That thing easy. I can't prove the one that's yet to come, but when they tell us that the the one the one of the ones that was is also going to be the eighth, I can prove that. I can tell you that that's the Greek. Right, it's easy because I can look at scripture and I can say, well, this the book proved that. Right? If I can't prove it, I'm not about to sit here and go, oh, well, I think it's Saudi Arabia. I think it's America. I don't have time for that, right? We only have time for what we can prove in the book. 
We can't prove it. Let's just wait and see what the Most High God say. I'm not in the game of trying to gamble and say, hey, let's just go with this. I'm in the, I'm in the game of teaching the book. If I can't teach you something in the book with what my theory is, that thing don't make no sense to me. All right? So we look at it, you know what I'm saying? Some theories you could say, if you look at Isaiah 21, you can make the case that after it says Babylon is fallen, it's fallen, it does start to talk about Edom. Um, certain the cities of the Edom is in current day Saudi Arabia. So people will make that connection and say Babylon is Saudi Arabia in the end time history, but Babylon is Saudi Arabia. You might also make the case that Babylon, in a sense Babel, right, where the tower was built, was a unification of people after God told the people to spread out and multiply. They unified in one spot and they began to build something um, all together. But God's purpose was for people to not be in one spot, was to fill out the earth. So all people spoke one language. You can make the case that the European American system is emphasizing English. A lot of people are starting to speak one language, having one thought, one government, that type of thing. That, that theory is there as well. Again, neither one of these I can prove with the book. Uh, so we just have to wait and see what happens. So you have Mystery Babylon. She said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Let's hear about it. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils in the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Well, look at that. For and just to be clear, I ain't saying nobody can prove with the book. It might be a man of God out there that can prove it. It might be one of these darn sinners that can prove with the book, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I can't. When God give it to me, I talk about it. Keep going. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Uh huh. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Uh huh. What are they gonna say next? And I heard a voice from heaven saying, "What did the voice from heaven say?" Come out of her, my people. Get your butt out of here. That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Her what? Plague. Play, gonna be coming their butt down. He gonna be like, go ahead and get out of here, so you don't what? So you don't take part in what? Of her plagues. I'm trying to tell you, he gonna separate her. In her sins. He gonna separate her. It's stuff. A lot of people thinking, oh yeah, it's gonna be. We gonna have. Nah, you obey God. You ain't gonna have to go through a whole lot of stuff. That's a whole lot of this stuff. You're not gonna have to go. No, nah, the mark of the beast. You ain't gonna be able to buy or sell. You obey God. That thing ain't got nothing to do with you. That thing gonna have something to do with you because your butt don't trust God. God don't want you. Yo, kids is hungry. God don't want you to, that ain't no mark of the beast. I mean, just go, your kids is hungry. How are you going to feed your kids? You're right. You're right. I love my kids, and I know God loves my kids, too. He a father, just like I'm a father. We fathers. Hey, okay. Run your darn mouth. My kids be darn starving. <laughs> Wife, too. I'm sitting there starving with them, too. Like, we hungry. <laughs> this thing of the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, what we going to do? Mess around, darn quail fall off the ground. I'm gonna chop that thing. It's good here. That's how I do. That's how the most I got do for us. Get to complaining about how we hungry. He may give us quail into our, our what did what the book say? Our come out of their noses. Hey, come out of their nose. That's what it said. Yeah, that thing. Come out of our darn nose. How you get a whole bunch of quail in the middle of the middle of a desert. We gonna be all right. You gotta trust God for a little bit. We is hungry. Them things well, be, them things we wasn't hungry when we came out of Egypt. We wasn't hungry. We were starving. We is starving coming out of Egypt. This stuff, this whole thing is just a replay. I'm trying to let y'all know. If we don't learn the original lesson, a lot of these people, you think everybody going to be good? Grab uh, grab Ezekiel chapter 20. We think everybody going to be good? This whole thing is a big replay. So what you going to do if you haven't learned the original? I mean, you threw the whole first part of the book out. What you going to do when it starts to replay? Before that, grab me a uh, put a, put a put a little hold or a bookmark in Exodus chapter twenty. Before that, Ezekiel. give me Jer I mean uh, Ezekiel chapter twenty. Excuse me. Um, put a little bookmark there. Before that, give me uh, Jeremiah twenty three. Give me Jeremiah chapter twenty three. Give me verse one. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, what do you think these people doing? 
all these seminary classes. All right, all these all these famous black pastors, they Hebrews too. They can't escape, they Hebrews too. They're not feeding the pastor though. They definitely scatter. What do you think it is if, if I'm a Baptist and I got a church that holds 22,000 people, right? Supports my whole community. And I say, all y'all be Baptists, right? And then Creflo Dollar got his church. And I don't know what denomination he is, but let's just say his church holds 30,000 people. And he's a Pentecostal or something. I don't know. I don't know what he is. But you know what I'm saying? He's a Pentecostal. So I'm a Baptist. You a Pentecostal, right? Is that dividing the people? Yeah. You scattering them. What do you think they're doing? They're scattering the people. They're not unified. They're not telling them who God is. They tell them who a Baptist is. What a Baptist got to do with God? Y'all ain't never told, told us about a Baptist. Y'all should have never talked to us about a Baptist as in a denomination. Right? He never told us about a Pentadarn Costal. Told us to keep the law. He told us to obey him. That's all it. He called us what? Disciple. Book called us what else? Saints. What else did it call us? Believers. Walkers of the way. Brothers. All those words, appropriate. Baptist. Christian. Uh, even Hebrew Israelite. Right? All this stuff. That stuff you ain't going to find in the book. You'll find Hebrew in the book. You'll find Israelite in the book. You ain't never seen nobody call itself a Hebrew Israelite in the book. That's just too much. Right? I know why we do it. We do it because we just want to make it clear. I'm not a Jew like these people over here, right? And I'm not Israeli like these. Let me make it clear. I'm a Hebrew. Some of them put black on there. I'm a black Hebrew Israelite. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know I'm not to be confused with none of these people. I get, I understand. Who cares if they confuse me? You think I care if they confuse me? Sometimes. Sometimes I do care. You know what I'm saying? I always talking, you know what I'm saying? I tell people, you know what I'm saying? Well, the Bible says this. Oh, you're a Christian. Sometimes I think, I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got to work on that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that thing. That thing didn't bother Paul, did it? They called Paul a Christian. That thing didn't bother him. He didn't say, no, 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 I ain't no Christian. They called Paul a Christian. He was like, listen, I hope that you believe just as I do. Right? He just, he just kind of went on around it. Just believe what I'm talking about. Right? That thing didn't bother him. You'll never see Paul call himself a Christian. though, Right? But he didn't let himself get offended. Even Peter gave that advice. He was like, man, don't let these people bother. They, they, if you suffer as a murderer, as an as a, uh, evildoer, or even as a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Don't let these people, don't let that thing bother you. So I got to work on that a little bit. That thing bothers me a little bit. I can't bother. It ain't bother me. I'm like, ain't no Christian. Christian. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get me confused with them. You know what I'm saying? But that thing, ain't no book for that one. I can, I can, yeah. Book ain't never said don't be bothered. You call, him, you call me a Muslim, we talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't no darn Muslim. You know what I'm saying? You got, you grow your beard out. Are you a Muslim? You should I ain't no Muslim. You cut that. I ain't never. I talk about the Bible all day. You ain't never seen the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know how many guys in biker gangs got beards? <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? Where were you at? This is Je Jeremiah chapter 23. What verse? <sighs> Two. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Uh -huh. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. Uh huh. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them. Out of where? Of all countries where I have driven them. Oh, goodness. Okay. And will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Oh, goodness. And I will set, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. You remember what we were just talking about? Little pockets of people like here, here we only got, you know, a couple, seven people in here, a couple people watching online got some other group out there we don't even know about that's really righteous. I ain't talking about these just a whole bunch of group, but I mean really righteous and really teaching the word as it's written, right? And they over there, we don't know nothing about them, but they got them a little group. And he probably got one that got a larger group. He said all over the world, he said, I'm going to set up shepherds and what? Shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. He going to give us shepherds, and they going to feed us, right? And we not going to be afraid. Why do you think we're not going to be afraid? Because we know. when We, we know when we look in the Revelation. You, you talk about Revelation to people. What are they going to say? Oh, that's Revelations. I mean, that's, that's my favorite book. They always say it's their favorite, too. They blind. That's my favorite book. It's scary. I just, sometimes I get chills reading it. It gives me nightmares. The reason why it's scary is because they don't know. It ain't scary for us. We look at it and we're like, oh, this thing. Man, that's going to be real hard for them. So we look at it. These sinners going to have a hard time. You know what I'm saying? We look at it like, oh, goodness. That thing encouraging us, man. You better turn from sin. You better watch out for revelation. Right? It's like, man, we got to get a, 
Let me get my family on this, man. I don't want them going through this stuff. That's what that's how we look at it. When they look at it, they like, oh, that's it. It's gonna be a rough time. I just have to hold out until the rapture. Right? It's important for us to be able to look at it and be like, no, I think, man, it's just, if you obey God, you're good. We'll make it out. We'll be all right. Right? All we got to do is obey. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He said they're not going to fear. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, mm -hmm. and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Uh -huh. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called. Uh oh. The Lord our righteousness. All capital, right? I like that. Translate put that in, but still, that thing still looks nice. Keep going. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord lives, which brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He said, The day is going to come where people not even. Think about the fact that he brought the children out of Egypt. What are they going to be saying? But the Lord lives, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. I have no idea what this is talking about. He said, nobody going to remember when I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. You know what they're going to be thinking about? When I brought the children of Israel from all the countries where I've driven them. I can't think of no group of people that were sent to a whole bunch of countries in captivity other than us. So it's going to be real nice. We just hold out. Just hold out. A lot of people still getting shot down and ain't getting no justice. I ain't telling you to be quiet now. We fight for it. We fight for injustice. That's our book. We ain't said, book tell us, our law tell us, don't you put your hand with the multitude. Just because you got a whole bunch of people I'm like, ah, it's, it's good, it's all right. We ain't supposed to just jump at the multiple. Well, everybody says it's all right, so we all right. No, nah, that thing wrong, it's wrong. All right? And I don't say, don't, don't get like some of these Hebrews, you, you, you get it, and you're like, well, we know that this is what God wants to happen, so we're going to, no, you're just too smart for your own good. Book tell, good book give you one job. Fight for injustice. Stand up for what's right. That's it. And if you got to die doing it, die. Right? That's what we do. I ain't telling you be quiet. But at the same time, we ain't got to expect no justice from these people. We gonna tell them give it to us, but we ain't gotta expect it from them. They ain't about to give us no justice. It's just setting them up, right? It just said when y'all was sure we're dealing with these people, and, and and we know that he he knew for a fact he was gonna go to that cross and he's gonna die, right? You think he's okay? Well, you know what? Uh, I just know that this is how it has to play out, and so I'm not even gonna argue with these Pharisees. He's still gonna tell them, yeah, this is who I am. This is what I gotta do, right? Why are you talking to me? You know what I'm saying? That's evil in your heart. He's still telling them that they're wrong. Right? He still try to give them an opportunity to be co to confront evil, right? To confront what they're doing. Right? We don't know. A lot of these people, if President Trump, a lot of, of y'all hate him and all this stuff, but President Trump, he might just turn. What do you think? Go Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. This is uh, this Mal uh, uh, Malachi or Micah? Ezekiel. What's the last chapter in Malachi? Micah is what I'm Give me Micah uh, 7. Give me Micah 7, chapter 14. Let me shoot through this. You can talk about Trump a little bit, what he might do. I ain't, I ain't mad at Trump too much. Tell me a little bit. They tripping. We can talk about that transgender stuff. So like, what do you say about transgender? They can't be in the army or something. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. A lot of people they look at, I try to tell people, our standards are different, man. We come from a different group of people. We ain't got it like everybody else. A lot of these other people, they can just, you know, smoke a little bit of weed. You know what I'm saying? They be all right. You know what I'm saying? They be all right. We smoke a little bit of weed, and we going to jail for life. Somehow, somehow, that thing going to work out for us going to jail for life. We don't mess around and get shot. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that what they tell, uh, what's his name, Philando? Philando? Uh, that little weed in this system, right? That thing got him killed. That thing don't happen for everybody else. I mean, he smoke a little bit of weed. They go home and they kids. We smoke a little God to take us out because what he look at, who, who put the authority in place to do that to us? Most of You think he did it on accident? 
our sins going to be punished at the rate that God wants them to be punished. And we're looking for the justice of these justice people. I mean, because they have a different justice system. It's no wonder they operating off of our justice system. You be stoned. You know what I'm saying? This type of stuff, we get stoned for it. So what they do? They shoot them stones right in our body. Right? And the most high God, gonna, he going to slaughter them for it. You know why? Because they didn't do it with a mind of righteousness. They not, they not shooting us saying, according to the law of God, you sin and let me kill you. If they're doing it with that heart, most high God might spare them. Right? They ain't doing it with that heart. You know what heart they doing it from? I'm scared of these people or I don't like these people or you know what? If I if I don't do this, somebody else in this world going to get hurt by this black man. That's the type of mind that they have. Right? They create these scenarios that justify what they want to do. Right? And for that, most I got going to slaughter every one of them unless they repent. Right? And that's why it's important for us to speak to these things and let them know courageously that you wrong. I don't care what you're going to do to me. You wrong. Right. The stuff you talking about is wrong. What stuff you did is wrong. Right. If they confront that, they can repent and they can be our brother. We can forgive them. God will forgive them. Right. If not. They but gone and they slaughter and we're going to be happy about it. It's going to be right. If everybody that go to hell, that thing going to be right. Because he gave you ample opportunity to turn. I'm sitting here and cry about somebody going to hell for it. I don't make no sense. Should have been crying when you were here. All right, keep going. What we got? Micah 7. This is Micah chapter 7. Give me verse 14. Feed thy people with the rod. Feed them with the rod. Of, feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thy heritage, which dwell solid, sol, sol, solitarily in the wood. Yeah. Solitarily in the wood. In the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will According I... According to thy days of what? Of the coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. He said, just like when you came out of Egypt, I'm going to show you marvelous things. Y'all think this is going to be something different? It's going to be a replay. He said, according to the days y'all came out of Egypt. Okay, keep going. The nation shall see and be confounded at all their might. Mm -hmm. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears sh ear shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. Mm -hmm. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Because of thee. <laughs> Why you think they're going to tell us to get up out of there? All these plagues going to hit these people? They're going to be scared. He said because of you. And be like, man, get these Hebrews out of here. If y'all don't take these Hebrews out, they're going to be pushing us out the door. When we were in Egypt... We, the, the book say we spoiled them, not because we robbed them, not because we beat them up, because the book used the word borrow and lent. If you look at the actual trans, the actual word, it's not borrow. We didn't borrow nothing. You borrow something, you bring it back. All right, you got some Hebrews that teach, you know what I'm saying? They try to teach people to go to Egypt right now, and they'd be like, you know, just borrow something from your, your, your family and all this stuff, knowing that you have no intention of bringing it back. That's stealing. I ain't borrowing. All right, but you look at the book where it say borrow, the actual word is just inquire, ask. Right. So we asked these people, we were like, yeah, you know, can I have, you know what I'm saying, some of that gold, you know what I'm saying? It's that, it's take it here. Take the gold, just leave. Take whatever you need here. Go on. My kid just died. Right? They looking at me, man, my kid, I ain't got time. Just take whatever you want. Just go. Get out of here. Let me help you out. I care you for go. Right? That's what they're trying to do. Get us out of here. What do you think these people going to be doing? Something different? All this stuff happening, all these plays hitting the ground? They be looking like, man, look, just get your butt out of here. Whatever you need, go. Keep going. Watch this. As a matter of fact, no, grab, uh, grab Hosea 2. Hosea 2, chapter 14. It's Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. These people think these, these, people think these Hebrew is like be making some of this stuff up. Some of this stuff be wrong when they be talking. But some of that stuff they be talking about is absolutely right. We'll open it up in the book. I, the, the most I got to give it to us where we can divide. All we got to do is obey the man. We can divide it and take the real. I can tell. Somebody gets to talking. I can tell if they doctrine is of them is or, uh, or if it's of God. We got to obey the man. He give it to us. It ain't hard for him to give us the secrets. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. This is Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. 
And I will give her her vineyards from thence in the Valley of Acor for a door of hope. Mm, Valley of Acor. Where was that? Uh, well, that was Joshua. That was right outside of Jericho, wasn't it? Yeah. Y'all remember when we came into the land, what was the first place we went? Jericho, right? We went. The first place we went was Jericho. What was the second place we went? AI. AI. And what happened with AI? We defeated. We got defeated. Then we ran back to where? Jericho. The Valley of Acor. So that's right at the entry. That's our starting point, right? Why do you think this sounds familiar? Why do you think when we're talking about leaving the land, it's bringing us right back to the starting point where we went? A lot of this stuff going to be exactly the same. We're going to take the same routes. Do all, A lot of this stuff, we're going to be on the ground. We're going to be in the wilderness. A lot of this stuff going to be exactly the same. And it's going to play out the same way. And it's only going to be the ones of us that are knowledgeable. It's going to be a lot of people with us. Not everybody going to be with us, though. We'll talk about it. Keep going. Watch this. And I will give her vineyards from thence in the Valley of Acor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Mm-hmm. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And when you it, say she, is talking about Yisrael. It's talking about us as a people. And it shall be that day, says the Lord, that you shall call me Ishai and shall call me no more Ishai Baali. Right? And no more my Lord is what it's saying. All right? So a lot of people say Lord, and you see the Bible translated as Lord and all that. When they say Baal, when you say Baal, Baal just means Lord. All right? So when they're saying when they're saying they're worshiping Baal, they're worshiping something that they were calling Lord, right? So when you see all the stuff translated as Lord, that's why a lot of people they won't they won't use Lord when they talk about God. A lot of the Hebrew is life when they come to that. Oh, I don't want to use Lord. They want some of them won't use God either, because God you could make the case that a uh, uh, ancient God was pronounced God, right? Um, but our people is also pronounced God too. Their, their tribe of Gad, the way you pronounce that would probably be God. You know what I'm saying? So that's a false argument. But anyway, whatever it is, you look at it, and that's what it means. He said, you are no longer, I mean, he said, I'm, you're going to end up calling me husband, Ishi, and you will no longer call me Baali, which means my my lord. Right? Keep going. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and uh-huh. they shall no more be remembered by their name. Mm-hmm. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword of battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. Mm-hmm. And I will betroth un- thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. Mm-hmm. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, says the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. All right. So when we, he said, in that day, our crops going to grow. That's what he's explaining to us, really. He said when he's talking about, you know what I'm saying, he's going he, he gonna to hear the heavens and they're going to hear the earth. He said, our crops going to work. We ain't going to be planting stuff and then it's just stuff not going up. What y'all think going to happen? Like, we ain't got to eat no more? A lot of people imagine the kingdom is like, man, nobody has to eat. So I guess the table that he's talking about in the kingdom is just for nothing. Yeah, we still going to be eating. Still going to be growing crops. Right? We've been working in the field. I don't know if we're going to have iPhones. I ain't never read that. I don't know. I can't tell you about iPhones. I can tell you that he said that we're going to be growing crops for sure. Right? We're still going to be working in the field. Still going to be doing sacrifices. Right? All this stuff, all this stuff coming, it's going to be a replay. Everything just going to hit reset and it's going to happen the way God originally intended. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Right? Grab, uh, what was that? Hosea? What verse? We leave off. 22. 22. Go to uh, Isaiah 35. You still want to go to Ezekiel 20? Uh, yeah, let's let's go to Isaiah. Thanks for reminding me. Let's go to Isaiah 35 first, and then we're going to go to Ezekiel 20 right after. It's Isaiah 35, verse 1. Watch this. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. What? So we're going to be walking through this wilderness, and the book describes the wilderness as being happy for us. Why? It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The, the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellence You know what Lebanon Carmel. was, right? Super, See, when you know the history, it means something to you. Super beautiful, green, When it say the glory trees. of Lebanon, it's talking about tall green trees. Yeah. 
right? Great, great scenery. See we this. talking about being in the wilderness. So it's saying the wilderness is going to be happy for us because it's going to blossom. The glory of Lebanon is going to be given to it. So we're going to be walking through a desert, and it's going to turn into a great scenery. It's going to have tall trees growing because we there. It's a replay. This part a little different, though. Right? This part, we didn't see this in the wilderness the first time. Right? This part a little different. He said it's going to be a great scene when we walk through. Turn into what they call it when uh, it's a nice oasis. Oasis. Turn that thing into an oasis wherever we walk. Right? Keep going. Watch this. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Uh huh. What's going to happen to the blind people? And say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. Mm -hmm. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. It's going to be miracles happening. All then, right? What you going to think these, these, these woke black people are like, we from Africa. We from the Zulu tribe, right? We from Egypt, you know what I'm saying? Kemet, you know what I'm saying? It's Kemetology. All this weird stuff they be talking about. All this, all this, all these myths they they tie themselves to and they ignore what we talk about. When this stuff start happening, what do you think they gonna do? Well, you know, this Hebrew stuff. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, Egypt and Hebrew are brothers. You know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, you know what I'm saying? Then we allowed y'all into our land. You know what I'm saying? It's that nut. Right now they telling us Hebrews ain't never been to Egypt. That ain't gonna change real quick. You know, Hebrew. Matter of fact, Egyptians and Hebrews intermarried, so I think we are Hebrews after all. They're going to make that thing work so quick. They gonna that thing going to be smooth. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, right with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Let's go with it. They're going to sound just like the Jewish people today. Yeah. The Jewish people do the same thing. Some of the ones that find out who we are. Well, you know, it is possible that if you're by the equator, you get darker. And you're up north, you get lighter. So it's very possible that we are all brothers that look nothing alike. Yeah, of course. These yeah. people have lost their darn mind. They just... But it's, it's, it's right for them because you look at some God with these people. That ain't new for us. What do you think Laban did? We, okay, so when Jacob went in and he went in, he went in for one woman, right? What do you think? When Laban saw how this man worked and God blessed him for this, he was like, yeah, you did your thing. Turn off the light. Turn, turn off the light off. You did your thing. Go. Wait, get the bunch in there for me. Yeah, that's right. There you go, you got, oh, no, in our country, we give the older first. You can have her, too. Just give me seven more years. Just give me seven more years. Seven more years, you can have her, too. He worked them seven years, get her. He like, all right, man, it's time for me to get up out of here. Ah, why would you want to go? Why would you want to go? He told her, God has been good to me since you've been here. I tell you what, just keep my coat. Actually, no, it was, it was Jacob's idea. Jacob was like, you know what, I'm going to keep you going. Right? I'm going to keep you going. And this is the deal we're going to make. When I get up out of here, I'm going to take all of them that got spots on them. All the ones that ain't perfect, they mine. All the ones of yours that got one solid color, they're yours. Most like God gave it to them to pass the rod over them. Right? And any one that he passed the rod over, them things, only the ones with spots he passed that rod over. Them things grew up nice and they, you know what I'm saying, bred more. So he had a nice full flock. All oh, that's Jacob. Then the rest of them, you know what I'm saying? They went to uh, Laban. Them things all beat up. Guess how long he did that? Seven years. Six years. Six years he did it. At the end of the day, he there. He said, "This twenty years I served you. How many times you changed his wages? Ten times. How many times we is in the wilderness? How many times we we are uh, rebelling against God? Ten times. This book. This thing ain't new. These people know when God bless them." You think all these times we tried to get out of this country and Black Panther telling, you know what I'm saying, just, just send us somewhere else then. We'll do it, send us somewhere else. Some of them had the idea, yeah, we'll do Abraham Lincoln. He was like, yeah, send them, send them to Panama, I think that we were trying to send us. These white people like, you ain't sending these people. Don't, you lost your darn money. We, send them, we making money down here. What you talking about? That crazy stuff. You see these, these people down south when they when they're fighting the Confederacy? A lot of people will tell you, and they believe it. They were fighting for the slaves. They would. They're like, we got to protect our investment. 
The North wasn't innocent. Don't let these people tell you the, the North was innocent. The North was darn innocent. They are jealous. They are trying to even out the playing field. They people up there North, they wasn't going for it. They are like, man, this stuff is brutal. I don't really like it. They are like, well, if we can't do it up here and keep our people cool, then y'all can't do it either. So they tried to keep the playing field. Could everybody get money down there? I mean, cake. Just, mm, right? So they trying to even it out. Like, man, y'all got to stop that slavery stuff down there. Economically, it's throwing stuff off. Right? They still had slaves up north, too. They just couldn't do it at the level that they're doing it down there. A different environment. Different stuff could grow. The stuff that was growing down there, you can make a whole lot of money from it. Ain't fair. Right? It's Let's shut cold. some of that stuff <laughs> it's down. It's cold up north, snowing there. They, they Confederate. They, yeah, you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't getting the type of cross. How you going to grow tobacco in that? <laughs> they caking off of that tobacco. You know what I'm saying? How you going to grow tobacco? No, they ain't getting no cake off of that. You know what I'm saying? Your cotton ain't coming in right up there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody need clothes. These people got the cotton field. He's like, oh, no, we good. We good. You know what I'm saying? So they making sure that all their investments protected. So they did fight for them. They made good deal. All these deal, 40 acres in the mule and all this stuff, they made them type of deals to us too. Right? They are making deal. Fight for us. Both sides. Fight for us. Fight for us. Right? Because they know. God, with these people. They know this stuff. These people, a lot of people try to make sense. A lot of people know this stuff. God being good to us on account of these people. As soon as we get up out of here, guess what's going to happen to this place? That's it. It's play, it's play done when we out of here. They just holding on to it. That's it. They ain't letting us go nowhere. I bet you too many of us left the country on vacation. They'd be like, oh, let hold on. Let's uh <laughs> hold on. Uh travel ban, uh 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 it's the African American uh, uh I mean uh hell mess they mess around. I don't know why my passport ain't working right now. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't too many people on vacation. Where y'all going? Mm -hmm. Cut that stuff out. Right? They got to protect the investment around here. I right, keep going. What else we got? Where we at? We still in Isaiah, right? Mm, yeah. All right, keep going. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb, and the tongue of the dumb sing. Mm -hmm. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall be come a pool in the thirsty land springs of water mm -hmm. in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes mm -hmm. and a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness, way of holiness. the unclean we go, it's gonna be a highway and they're gonna say it's the way of holiness he said what's gonna happen the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wafering men though fools shall not err therein he said the unclean ain't gonna come this way the fools ain't gonna do it. It got it's only gonna be for the righteous. So the unrighteous people ain't gonna be able to hop on it. Real interesting. You think it's only gonna be righteous people that come out with us? No. Ezekiel 20. This is Ezekiel chapter 20. Give me verse 33. Ezekiel sum it all up for us. I love this thing. I love this. And the whole world gonna know that the children of Israel were in the captivity. He leave himself a witness at every corner of this book. No matter what type of lie you want to tell, this book will light your butt up trying to get through it. Somebody know how to use it? He will light your butt up. He leave himself a witness at every corner of this book. It's Ezekiel chapter 20. It's verse 33. As I live, says the Lord, God surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. What does that mean when you say mighty hand and stretched out arm? That mean he want to give you a hug? He going to light you up. He say mighty hand stretched out arm? I mean, he said, I'm trying to get at that. But, what you talking about? That's plagues. Book said he came to Egypt with a mighty hand and stretched out arm. That's plagues he talking about. Keep going. And with fury poured out, will I rule over you? What do you think that fury is? Right? That fury is, that's the wrath. Ain't that what the, the seven plagues are called? The seven bowls or vials, right? The seven vials of wrath. That's what it is. That's the fury he's talking about. He's pouring out all that fury. Didn't they say they going each angel that poured, we read it last week, each angel that poured out a plague, they poured it out, didn't they? With fury poured out, is that what they say? What do you think he's talking about? That's the plague. He said, I'm about to rule over y'all. And these people that rule over y'all now, they got to get out of here. Right? Y'all mine. Keep going. Watch this. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered 
with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. He said, I'm going to bring you to the wilderness of the people. And when you get there, that's where I'm going to plead with you face to face. What else? Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord God. All right, he said, just like I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness, in the land of Egypt, replay. So how did he plead with us there? He gave us the manna, gave us the quail, gave us his commandments. He gave us the law. He gave us the law and he gave us instruction. Right? And he told us, he said, if you do these things, you will live. He pleading with us. He's like, look, just do this. And you will be all right. He's going to do the same thing with us. He's going to plead with us. What else is he going to do? And I will cause you to pass under the rod. He's going to cause us to pass under what? The rod. What you think? So when 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 Jacob passed, uh, had the, the, the flock passing under the rod, what did y'all think that was about? Jacob passing something over the rod? He's talking about Yahushua. He's going to pass them under the rod. Some people. They're going to come out real good, and they're going to be accepted with Jacob. I mean, Yahushua. Right? Some people not. What do you think that was about when Yahushua was like, I'm going to separate, what was that, the Matthew sheep. 25? Sheep from the goats. I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. I wonder what he was talking about when he was separating sheep from goats. He making them pass over the wire just like Jacob was. Y'all thought I was talking about Jacob? I was talking about Yahushua. Keep going. Watch this. What's going to happen to the ones that don't pass? And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think when Jesus came, we entered into the new covenant. Lies. All right? He said. When Jesus came, he introduced us. When Yahushua came, he introduced us to the new covenant. But he told us what you were going to say? He said, I ain't even going to drink of the wine until I drink it anew. Right? He told us right after we, when we ate the supper with him, he told us, like, no, nah, I can't drink of this. He said, y'all drink. But I can't drink until I drink it anew. He couldn't do it because Moses, when it was time for Moses to seal the covenant on Sinai, what did he do? He took the 70 elders and he went up to the mountain. And he ate and, he ate. and drank. That's right. That seals our covenant. When Laban made the covenant with J Jacob, what did they do to seal it? They ate and drank. They ate and drank. That's how we seal our covenant. So Yahushua was like, well, I can tell y'all about it now. It ain't time to seal it yet. I can't seal it yet. It's not, it's not the appropriate time. And in Revelations, it say, he said, you're going to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sitting down eating with the Son of Man. Yeah, that's what Yahushua told him. He said, yeah, they're going to be eating. Because at that point, we're going to eat and we're going to drink. We're going to we have to wait for that one. But next week, Plus, he was a Nazarite. He couldn't drink no wine anyway. Yeah, that too. All right, but we look at it. That ha That's the way that we seal our covenant. At this point, he's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant. Right? This is when the covenant is brought in. Right? And then that's when everything is made solid. All right, watch this. Keep going. And I will purge out from among you the you rebels. Do what now? Purge out from among you the rebels. And then there's going to be a lot of you. people with us. But a lot of them ain't really going to be with us. When we get, before we get on that road of holiness, a lot of people are going to get purged because they can't go on there. All right? He said the foolish ain't going to be able to go on there. Not the unclean. Unclean ain't going to be able to go on there. You a sinner? But unclean, you ain't gonna be able to get on that road. He gonna purge them out first. Once they purge them out, all right, we gonna go. Who knows what the time frame? Maybe it's forty years, like it was before. Don't let these people. A lot of people talking about you know slavery started in in uh, sixteen nineteen. So in, in twenty nineteen, you know what I'm saying this thing all over. They predict the end of the world twenty nineteen. Ain't gonna be no end of the world. Even if even if we do get up out of here in twenty nineteen. Ain't gonna be the end of the world. We still got some time left. Still a whole lot of a whole lot of prophecy that gotta happen, right? We look at this thing. We got a whole lot of prophecy. That thing coming though. That thing coming. Keep going. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> he said they gonna bring. He, pay attention. This is the Most High God talking. Pay attention to what he said. He's going to bring them out of the country where they were where they were sojourning. sojourning. So wherever they were and they were in captivity, he's going to bring them out of there, right? He's going to bring them from Brazil. He's going to bring them from, from, uh, from uh, Jamaica and Haiti and uh, Colombia, right? He's going to bring them from all these different – he's going to bring them from uh, Europe, all different places in Europe. 
He gonna bring them from Russia. He gonna bring them from all these places, Iraq and Iran. All these places. a lot of black people that say they Hebrews out there too. <clears throat> he gonna bring all of our people from all these different places where we scatter around the world. He gonna bring us here, and then after we get there, he could have got rid of us right there. He gonna wait till all these people get there in the wilderness. Then he gonna be like, <laughs> "No, nah, you a rebel." All these Egyptians be like, "No, nah, what you talking about? Yeah, we we Hebrews now. Yeah, let me uh, let me just go." Oh, I'm a rebel guy? Yeah, stay your butt in the wilderness. We about to hit the highway, though. You, you not getting past God. All this foolishness these people doing, they not getting past. As soon as this thing get a little more popular, as soon as they start to see stuff moving and they start fearing God, you're going to see a lot of people switch up and it's going to be a cool thing. A lot of these Gentiles, they're going to be trying to carry us up out of here. All right? That's book. All right? The Gentiles are going to take us home. Y'all... Yeah, a lot of us think, you know what I'm saying, we're going to you know, have to purchase tickets. Mm -hmm. These Gentiles, just like before, they're going to be getting us out of here. And they take whatever you want. I'll pay for the ticket. Matter of fact, I'm going with you because I don't want to share in this foolishness. All these plays are going, I'm going to take you over there. Watch it. Grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, give me Isaiah 14. Let me see. Isaiah 11. No, Isaiah 14. Give me Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. Who? The strangers shall be joined with them. I wonder how the strangers are going to be joined with us. Get they butt up out of there too. They all see all them plagues happen. Like, man, I ain't messing around with this foolishness. That's crazy. You got a small group of uh of the, the, the fake Jewish people, right? The Jewish people right now, you got a small group of them trying to deal and make deals with the Igbo people in Africa. Because they know they are people. They starting to figure it out. Some of them, not 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 the majority, not the mainstream of them. They ain't gonna let that happen. But it's a small group that's starting to look at it and be like, if this is true, that thing don't bode well for us at all. Right, they looking at it like, nah, I know which way to win about to go now. Right? They've been learning all this stuff they like. They bought into it. They like, so wait a minute. If those are real, this that verse makes sense now. Right? This stuff's starting to come to make. Let's start up a fund to try to make sure the Ebo got some money. Let's set up some electricity for these people now. They trying to do it because they trying to get in this good graces. Right? That stuff, when this starts happening on a larger scale, these people ain't crazy. They don't be looking at this. No, we over here. No, we with the Hebrews. What are you talking about? Hebrew power. Hebrew power. Doing all that stuff, trying to get us up out of here, trying to help us out. Because they're going to want to be in God's good. And some of them are going to be honest about doing it. Some of them not, though. And they're going to get rejected in the wilderness. Some of them really going to be like, you know what? I feel bad about what I did. All my ancestors put y'all. So I really feel bad about this. And they're going to turn. And they're going to be real allies to us. Right? Some of them just going to be trying to fake the phone, just trying to get up out of a bad situation. Most I got, he ain't fooling most I got, that ain't crazy. He ain't gonna fool him. Grab me, uh, grab Revelation for him. Revelation 13, we gonna go back, but give me Revelation chapter 13 real quick. Let me show y'all something. It's Revelation chapter 13, verse, uh, 9. Revelation 13, 9? Mm-hmm. Then we gonna go back to, uh, to Isaiah. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Watch what he says. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. If you lead into captivity, what's going to happen to you? You shall go into captivity. What else? He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. You out here killing these folks, shooting down black people, and getting away with it. What's going to happen? You must be killed with the sword. Yo, but getting it. He going to slaughter all these people. Ain't nobody getting by. Nobody getting by. Only way you only way you're gonna try to escape it by repent. And you still gonna have to pay for your stuff. I'm under firm belief that somebody try to pull that stuff where they repent at the end, you know you Christian, you tell I mean only way somebody can repent on their death be in bed. I'm a, I'm of a firm belief the most high gotta add twenty more years to their life. And make them suffer, all twenty of them. How are you gonna escape God? You can't escape the man. That's crazy. You mess around. <laughs> Actually, I feel well. You know what I'm saying? 
Do you get up <coughs> and then die? The book tells you it's gonna be people that go through stuff and they're gonna be asking to die. Some of these plays gonna hit these people, they're gonna be asking to die. And he said it won't be given to them. You can't escape God. Just obey the man. Do it up front. You'll be, you'll be better off for it. Ain't no escaping. You can fool yourself. You can fool people around you. There's a lot of us walking here to be righteous. Ain't nobody going to know. You know what I'm saying? We're around you. Yeah, I'm righteous. I'm going out, doing behind the scenes, just doing whatever I want to do. Right? Ain't nobody going to know. Who you fooling? T? Me? Okay. You ain't getting away from God, though. What's the point? If you don't believe, don't even waste no time. If you believe, you know you're not fool, fooling them. If you don't believe, why are you wasting your time and halfway doing it? You better get out there and get your sin up. You better make the thing as close to worth it as possible. You burning in hell. That thing, let me tell you, if I know I'm going to hell, I'm definitely getting my money's worth. I'm going to be out here like Drake talking about YOLO. Because you you only got one chance. We got another one, though. You know what I'm talking about? We looking, we get this one right, we got another one to go to. That thing don't apply to us. But if you know you're going to hell, like you have no intentions, on really old man the book, you just gonna fake the phone? Nah, you waste you killing time. Don't be killing no time coming to no Bible study. Read no Bible. What you gonna read the Bible for? Don't be killing your time. You better make that thing worth it. <laughs> go out there and get you a couple, you know what I'm saying? Get you a couple hookers tonight, you know what I'm saying? Tomorrow, go get you some drugs. You know what I'm saying? Do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Get your money's worth. That thing ain't gonna never be worth it, but you can get close, maybe. I don't know. You tell me about it after you burn. You tell me how close you got. All right, keep going. What is it? In Revelation chapter uh, 13, verse 9, we're going to turn to verse 10 now. Yeah. Read it again for me, verse 10. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Right? So if you take people into captivity, you're going to go into captivity. If you kill with the sword, then you're going to be killed with the sword. That's basic logic, right? Let's go back to Isaiah. Watch this. It's Isaiah chapter 14. I think we left off verse 2. Mm -hmm. It's Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. He said, the stranger is going to be joined to us. Watch this. Nobody gets by. There's no way to do it. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall they rule shall over their oppressors. They shall take them captive whose captives they were. Those who take into captivity shall go into captivity. And these are the strangers who are joined with us. These are not, these are people who get into the kingdom. You understand? Like this, these are not, these are not sinners who just out there and like they in the kingdom. No sinner is gonna be serving us. Be very clear. There ain't gonna be no sinners out here serving us. There ain't gonna be the sinner. The sinner gonna die. Or they're gonna be outside of the kingdom. These are people who obey God, truly obey God, and it's gonna be their pleasure to be our servant. When you look at it, though, a lot of times we look at that servant thing and we thinking about how these people made us a slave. Our slavery is not like that. Right. God would never allow us to do no stuff like that. Our slavery is protection. All right. Our slavery. If a slave ran away in our in our land, what happened? This law. Learn the law. What happened to you? There's a lawyer right here. Whatever. You let these people tell you about their lawyer. It's a lawyer right here. He know the law. It's a lawyer. Tell them about the law, T. Whatever city they ran away to, that city would have to accept them and let them stay where they wanted to stay. I mean, but what if I don't want them to stay in my house, though? You got to. I mean, if he won't. If what? he want to stay with you, you got to let him stay with you. A slave can run away. He choose what house he want to stay in. And guess what you got to do? I let him do it. I mean, uh, make that bed up for you. Then. You know what I'm saying? You just go ahead and get your bed ready. Hold on. Let me get a comforter now. Make sure you all right. You can't return him to his master. What you going to do? Hey, he, he, hey, he escaped. Call somebody up. He escaped. That thing against our law. You a sinner if you do that. And I'm a Hebrew, right? I'm a Hebrew. I legally own my slave. My slave runs away against my will, and I own him against my will. You, according to the same law that says I own him, according to that same law, you can't send him back. You got to just take care of him. If I find out he's there, then whatever. But it ain't none of your business. You just make sure he's good. That's booked. If I, I mean, let's just say, I mean, lawyer T, if I... Got a slave, and I just smacked the mess out of him, ruined his eye. You got to let him go free because of his eye. If I injure your eye permanently, yo, but you out of here. All right, you free now. That's our law. 
If I hurt you to the point that you injured like that, your leg, anything like that, and you injured like that, you're free. Don't ever let these people tell you the Bible condones slavery. It was a lie. Y'all people condone, condone slavery. Our Bible would have never let that stuff go down. No righteous man could ever do that stuff and be called righteous in our land. So when they serve, it's a, it's a pleasurable thing. Any of us should be happy to serve the brother. That's what it means when you say you least in the kingdom. You great. In this time, right? Right here, right now, he told you, those that are greatest among you will serve the least. Is that not what he said? Then he also gave you a parable. He said, the man who sits at the lowest table will be told, move higher, right? And if you sit at the highest, you don't want nobody to come to you and be like, no, nah, that seat ain't for you, move lower. Is that the parable? Yeah. Right? So he gave us that parable. Look at how that works. Right now, if you serve the least, you'll be made the greatest. Right now, if the least serve you, you're going to be made the server. It's just going to flip. That's it. That's what we're looking at. Things are going to flip. So if we're being served, I mean, are we serve people right now as slaves? Right? We're at the bottom of the totem pole right now as slaves, but we, 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 we obey God. He put us at the top. And that's what you're going to see with the stranger. It's not disrespectful for them. We explain this to the Gentile. Don't try to make the Gentile feel bad about it. That's your brother. That's your brother. He make it to this point. That's your brother. It's an honor. And it would be an honor for you to serve him. Right? Keep going. This is a, uh, uh, actually, go grab, uh, grab Jeremiah. Let's try Jeremiah. Nah, say in Isaiah. Isaiah, let's do Isaiah 49. That's it. That's huh? the 41. Oh, you're looking for that one? Yeah. Isaiah 49, chapter 22. I mean, uh, verse 22. I'm going to try to wrap it up. It's Isaiah chapter 49, verse 22. Watch this. Thus says the Lord God, mm -hmm. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. Uh huh. And they shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. I told y'all the Gentiles going to bring us. The Gentiles, he said, they're going to be carrying, your sons and daughters, they're going to be carrying them on their arms. They're going to bring us. They're going to make this whole thing happen. They ain't crazy. They're going to be looking at things. Man, I don't look. I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe what my people. Now that I know who y'all are, I never really acknowledge it. I can't believe this what my people did to y'all. We owe y'all, right? They gonna go. You can see it happening right now. You can. I mean, you can see it happen. Black Lives Matter. You'll see some of the the people that fight the harder for it. These white folks. They be like, oh, no, you're white privilege. They be like, you do know you what? Okay, I ain't go for it then. You know what I'm saying? All right. They be doing. They be out there freaking out, right? Because and that's the same spirit that they gonna bring right now. It's just, you know, Black Lives Matter. It's like a meaningless cause almost. But when you when you when you bring it to the book and they really have some understanding and foundation in what they're doing, they gonna be some real allies for it. They gonna be they they gonna carry us over. They gonna pay for a lot of stuff for it. They gonna give us a lot of stuff that we go. We gonna spoil them just like we did out of Egypt. But this time they are gonna be with us. And even then they went. It was a mixed multitude, right? So a lot of them were still with us, right? It's important that we know that because when we go over and we deal with, with Gentiles and all these different things, it's important that we're able to explain this to them. Because this, this is not something that uh, a Gentile should be ashamed of. Right? They should be ashamed of what they what their ancestors did. Right? They shouldn't be ashamed of serving us in the kingdom. That's right. I mean, that's how, that's how the Most High God set it up. That's righteous. It ain't like they serving us. They're some slave. We spitting on them and treating them unjust. Our brother. You ought to, to want to serve your brother. Right? Keep going. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and queens thy nursing mothers. Mm -hmm. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth. And, and they're going to do what? Bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. That's contrition. Right? That's contrition. When you, when you feel so bad for what's happened to a people on account of something that you and your ancestors have done, you bow down and you lick up the dust from their feet on account of that stuff. That's contrition. They sorry. They regret what's happened at that point. That's a true ally. Right? It ain't got nothing to do with us. Glory for us coming to, to dominance. The, what the Most High God is showing you is that these people are seriously sorry. They seriously repented. He's given us hope 
you're going through a lot of stuff now. These people don't care about you. One day, these people going to understand what they did, though. One day, you're going to get what's just. He's letting us know that. Revelation. This is Revelation chapter 3, 9. Same thing. Just now, he's going to tell you exactly which people going to do it. It's Revelation chapter 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I Behold, know who that's talking about. I will make them to come and worship why, before thy feet. Why the Christian Jesus care anything about a Jew? Jews done away with. Jews put them to death. Right? It was all given to the Christians. Why he care? Why he sitting there talking about a Jew? I don't know how the book makes sense to Christians. I really don't. I, just, I mean, I'll be looking at it. That thing didn't make sense to me when I was a Christian. But you know what I did? Well, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, I mean, you got to say some weird stuff to yourself just to make yourself okay with the fact. This doesn't even make sense. You look at the book now. That thing makes sense. You just look at it like, man, I can take it. I ain't got to play with no verses and be like, well, even though it says this, really it means that. I ain't got to do none of that stuff. I can look at it and be like, that's what it say. That thing right, too, and it feel good. He telling you the Jews who say they are Jews but are not and do lie. Right? Let me make sure I correct. The ones who say they Jews and they not and they do. He may, Why you got to say all that? The ones that say they do but they not. Why you got to add on they do lie? He just trying to let me, let me make look. They lying. All right. What is going to happen? They, they, they of what? Behold, I will make them to no, come. No, no, no. Before that? Oh. They are of what? Of the synagogue of Satan. He's trying to tell you about these people. He's trying to tell you about these people. Look, what's going to happen? Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. What do you think Isaiah was just talking about? Revelation just revealing it to us. When you read that in Revelation, you were supposed to say, I remember that. I remember that. I've seen that before. Now it's just revealing to you, oh, these are the people that's, it's going to be the fake Jews that do this. And these are the ones that going to be the ones that make it into the kingdom. Right? These are the ones that feel so bad they repented from what they did, and they actually make it into the kingdom. A whole lot of them are going to make it. A lot of them ain't going to be, be able to bring themselves to do that. burn in hell too the other one's going to be sitting there bound down kissing our feet and they're going to make it into the kingdom and they're going to be glorious right along with that's going to be our brother God going to look at them no different from us many people in the Christian be talking about oh God doesn't see race and all this stuff that's what they talk about in the kingdom it's true in the kingdom ain't none of that stuff going to matter we all going to be brothers we got no time for that stuff before the kingdom God is definitely paying attention to race he got certain promises going to these people, certain promises going to these people, and that thing got to play out exactly as it's written. Race matters, absolutely. Don't tell me no race don't matter. It matter when y'all are trying to say we is from Ham and you know, justify slavery. I don't want to hear that stuff. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 61. Let's get up out of here. This is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 4. After that, we're going to grab real quick uh, Revelations 11 also, so we can talk about I think I see where we're going to have to go next week. So we're going to go to Revelation 11 after, um, but first Isaiah chapter 61, verse 4. Real quick, wrap this up. And they shall build the old waste. They're going to do what now? Build the old waste. It's a replay. What we have to do, we have to go into the, uh, we have to go into the land. We went through the wilderness. Moses led us so far. Then after that, Moses died. Joshua was like, yo, let's do it. You know what? What's Joshua's name? Yeah, sure. That's crazy, ain't it? And Yahushua brought us into the land. Yahushua, the son of Nun. Right? He brought us into the land. And what did he do when he got there? Uh, he set up the uh, set up the pillar things. He set up the mm -hmm. pillar. He did mm -hmm. that. He also 